climate change can have all sorts of different effects on a given species. So some of them seem to be completely resilient to it and some of them seem to suffer a lot. Uh, but it often interacts with other human impacts as well. Humans are having a massive impact on the natural world. Uh, so we now live in a pe period that's called the Anthropocene, uh, which means the human era, the period when we are the dominant force affecting our planet. And we affect it in all sorts of ways, directly and indirectly. We tend to think of some animals as being very resilient, very able to adapt to the things that humans do to their environments. Uh, many primates come into that category. We know they're really good at making a living in cities or alongside humans. They mob tourists for food, they steal from garbage, they do all sorts of things that make us think they're going to be fine if the environment changes around them. And what we've been trying to do here is figure out exactly how that's going to work because we do know other species are having to change their ranges. They're being forced out of areas where it gets too hot or too dry or for that matter too wet depending on the local conditions. They're being reduced in population size, so they're losing numbers and they're unable to persist in certain areas, or they're being forced into conflict with humans. Baboons are really interesting, because baboons are one of those monkey species that you think is going to be absolutely fine when the environment changes. They're really resilient, they're quite large-bodied, they're quite large-brained, they're smart, they're flexible, uh, they can live in all sorts of places where there are lots of humans or where there are not very many humans at all, no humans even, in all sorts of different habitats. Um, we would have thought they'd be fine. So. My student and I decided to find out because they seemed like a really interesting case study. If it's so hard to predict the effects of climate change, maybe we start with something that we think is going to be fine and see what happens. So we did some work trying to model the effects of climate change on six different species of baboon. And what we found was that there are different effects depending on the species. So there are at least two species that look from our models as though they're going to do really well in climate change. When climates get warmer, they're going to expand their ranges, they're going to come into more contact with humans, they're going to be able to exploit more environments and more crops and more places. We had another species that wasn't going to be affected at all, as far as we could see. It might shift its range a little bit, but it was going to have access to the same sort of area to live in. And then there were three species of six, which was quite surprising to us, that were not going to do so well. And we thought this was really interesting because it suggests that even very similar baboon species that we think of as all being resilient and ecologically flexible are going to respond in different ways. So human activities on the ground in the place where an animal lives can have a huge impact. If we convert forest to farmland, that's a really obvious massive one. If we cut down particular types of trees or take particular resources out of natural habitats, that has a really big impact. Uh, we can dam rivers, we can do all that kind of thing that makes an impact on the ground. But we also have indirect effects. So we have effects when we buy particular products that might cause um, overseas farms to change their production methods. Uh, palm oil is a really good example at the moment. Everybody's being very careful of palm oil products because our purchasing decisions here in the West make a lot of difference where they're growing palm oil. We also have, obviously, uh, impacts based on our emissions, um, our use of fossil fuels, that kind of thing. And we have um, impacts when we make political and economic decisions. Things that you do in one place can affect places that you've never heard of or never thought about because the whole world is interconnected. There's all sorts of opportunities to put climate change into your studies at Bangor. Uh, in particular we do have specialist modules, so there are specialist modules in environmental science and in biology. Uh, so the biology one looks at life and a changing climate in third year and then there are other opportunities through the degree to think about it as part of ecology and evolution modules and as part of looking more generally at human interactions with the environment in our environmental science and biology degrees. For the primate side of it we also have courses in primatology. The work that I've just been talking about with baboons was one of my master's students who came in and wanted to know more about how baboons were going to be affected by climate change. So we designed a project for her to do so. The longer you're going to live the more likely it is that your life is going to be affected by climate change. I always think that's a slightly sad answer because it suggests that if it's not going to affect us we shouldn't shouldn't worry about it. But there's a more positive side to it too which is that people coming through the education system today are just beginning to be able to do something about it. We're just starting to develop the science and the social science and the economic, uh, economic ideas and the political ideas to be able to do something about climate change at the local level up to the global level. So I think that's a really important reason why people should get more engaged is that they're actually at, at a place where we can start to do something and we can do something as individuals or as a collective now.